is Hell <laughs> Welcome to Lock Picking Legend. And yes, you are indeed watching Lock Picking Legend, which I think we can all agree is the finest of all YouTube lock picking channels. No. Right. Okay, so today's video is about picking uh, cylinder locks using the Yale Leashy style pick. But before we get into that, we're going to need to talk about paracentric keyways. Because it's the paracentric nature of uh, pin cylinders that made the journey from the Leashy vehicle pick to a working, functioning, excellent pin cylinder pick such a load of problems you know there was like four or five versions of them so let's let's look at paracentric keyways a paracentric keyway basically is well it, not even basically it's quite simple it is simple it's it's a security feature really it's where the warding of the keyway protrudes past a center line if you were to draw a line down the middle of the keyway any warding that protrudes over that from the left or the right that makes it a paracentric keyway and that's really all it is if we have a look at these um these locks here you've got like a dexter a segal corbin another corbin a schlage or schlage i don't know how you say it quick set an ilco anyway you can see there's eight locks there now have a look at them which one of those would you say are paracentric? Which ones have warding that protrudes over a centre line drawn down those locks? So I'll give you a couple of seconds to look at them. Okay. Minds made up decisions come to well here we go out of all of them only three were actually paracentric if you look at the ones with the red crosses on them you can draw a center line down there and there's no warding that goes over the center line now vehicle leashes no no vehicle leashes they're warded locks they're not pin cylinders and so none of them are paracentric. So the, the leashy vehicle picks aren't paracentric. Here's another illustration. Look, I knocked up these today. And you can look at them and think, well, yep. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they're not based on actual um, keyways. But they, they're kind of recognisable. Legendary. However, we click to this one. Bing! And you can see I've drawn the center line down it. And none of the top ones are paracentric. And that weird one at the bottom right is, because you can see that little bit of warding sticking out over the vertical center line. So you get the idea. I mean, look, this is a keyway that is not paracentric, right? Now, I can understand why you might think, why are you showing me that? But this one, is paracentric and it really is it's just warding that's put there to make picking locks more difficult and lock picking lawyer made a video what eight years ago talking about how to deal with warding and it's quite interesting actually let's have a look at that video a little a little bit of it i'm sure he won't mind so what lock picking lawyer is showing here is how standard and traditional hooks like we all know this one i think that's a peterson gem lovely flat-headed hook and you'd think you know oh, a nice thin one will help me with difficult warding but that's not getting anywhere near those pins look it won't even get into the pin chamber and it, it, it used to be a thing that thinner picks would help you with difficult warding is a deforest diamond or a, a diamond reach pick sometimes called and you know a little bit better but if you've got tricky warding you know a thinner pick 
However thin isn't going to help you. Now, thinner picks do help with tighter keyways and they do help with other security issues, but that's what you need. You need a longer hook. And here's actually how you get around warding issues when picking pin cylinders SPP by using a hook that can just bypass the warding and get up into those pin chambers. You know, and you could do that with a 24 thousandths hook. It's not about the thickness of the pick, it's about the length of the hook. Okay, why is all this relevant? I've had so many people write to me and saying, you know, oh, my, uh, my leashy Yale style, it's bent, it's twisted. But it's meant to be twisted. That's part of how they got round being able to pick paracentric locks. You know, let's have a look at this video and it will put it into a bit of perspective. Okay, so this is where everything I've previously said starts to make sense. I've got a leash in this cross-section lock. Look at the pick there. Look at the angle it's coming down on that pick. Now, I'll leave a link to a video I made about pin shapes in the top right of this clip now. Go and, ha go and have a look at that after this video because that is also relevant. Basically, look at the warding. You need to get your pick, your leashy pick, to be picking at that angle in between the left and right warding protrusions. If it went straight down like a, like a vehicle leashy, you're not going to get around your warding. You won't be able to pick paracentric locks. That's why pin cylinder leashies are twisted. See the way it goes right down there? I mean, that's on the side of that pin. It's not anywhere near the top of it. However, we can still pick the lock. And that's why when you get your Yale leashy style pick, the, the body is twisted away from the pick. I mean, look at that. And if you have a look at that other video about different pin shapes, you would understand why a different pin shape on that key pin could cause this pick all sorts of problems. There'd be a way around it, but I think that illustrates it lovely, if I can keep the thing still. <laughs> but yeah, look at the angle that the actual picking tip is having to come down at. And if you can visualize that when you're working with these picks, you're going you're gonna to get a bit further on. You're going to understand what, what you're actually doing in there and why you're feeling certain things, such as the warding and not the pick. Okay, moving on. All right, so I've got three locks here. I think I've picked two of them with the leash. I'm not sure if it fits one of them, but that's not the point. So this is a six pin lock, you can see it, Euro cylinder, um, nothing special. There's the six pins. And here's another six pin Euro cylinder. But if I match pin one, and we're, you know, one's the one by the keyway. Look how by the time we get to pin six, let me line them up a bit better. That's out of line. It might only be by a fraction, but when you're using a, a leashy pick, that's going to cause you problems. Look at this one. This is another six pin lock. But the space in between the pins is different. The size of the pin chambers is different. The sixth pin on the bottom lock is actually closer than the fifth pin on the top lock. And that's actually what this video is about. How to pick locks with different spacings where the markings on the leashy Yale style pick don't match up with the pins in the lock and you can actually see here, if we look at these keyways you'll see what I mean about that paracent that paracentric angle you can see that if the pick wasn't going up at that angle you'd be in all sorts of trouble but because of the way the pick works it gets on that little angle there and you'll see the same with this one I mean you know you're gonna have no joy with a pick going straight up you're just gonna be clanking into that walled in 
But with the Lishi at that angle, which is why it's twisted, you can get round it. See, see all that. You can see the, the the paracentric nature of it. But that's the angle that's important to us. And that's also why in that lock picking lawyer video I showed you, it's not always about the thinness of the picks, but their ability to reach under the warding and into the pin chambers. Right, let's do some picking. Actually, we're not quite at the picking stage yet. So, uh, you might have noticed we're dealing with some ambient sound. There's a little party going on outside. But legends don't worry about ambient sound. Oh no, ambient sound worries about legends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amazing. Right, have a look at this nasty diagram I knocked up in my sleep. This is pretty much explaining what I just showed you with those real locks, but in diagram form. Um, because this video is actually about how to pick locks when the pins don't match up with the markings on your leashy. Last video I made was about picking locks where they do match up. But don't be put off, don't be threatened. You've just got to, like all lock picking, you've just got to get a bit of knowledge, a bit of experience, a bit of practice, a lot of confidence, and go for it. So have a look at this uh, diagram. So they're all cores or plugs, as uh, <laughs> they, it, they're confusingly both known as. So, four cores there. Now, the top core, A, you can see that that lock matches up perfectly with the Yale Lishi. You know, marking one, cuts through the middle of pin chamber one, two, three, four, five. That, they're, they're your ideal locks for this pick. But this pit can also open ones that don't match up. Look at core B. And all it takes is, and I'll show you in a minute when I actually get round to some picking, you've just got to go through it first and identify where the pin chambers are. So look at the first one, uh, pin one we'll call it, because it is. So you notice that that's actually slightly left of the uh, marking one whereas pin two is slightly less left of marking two pin three is right down the middle so logic would suggest and i picked a lock like this very recently i think it's on one of the earlier videos that pin four is slightly to the right of the fourth marking and pin 5 is a bit more to the right. So essentially from pin 3, it's like a palindrome. It's like a mirror of itself. And, and that's quite lot. That sort of makes sense. When you can tell that the, diff the difference between 1 and 2 is slightly moving over and 3 is down the middle, you, you can kind of guess if you understand what I'm saying that 4 and 5 are going to be the opposite of 1 and 2. Rather than being slightly right of the number, they're going to be slightly left of the number. Pin C, uh, sorry, core C is all over the shop. Uh, the first one, it's very far um, right of the middle of the, 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 the pin chamber. And then pin 2, just a little bit less right. Pin 3, a little bit even more less. Pin four down the middle and pin five just a bit left of the um, pin chamber. And it's just a question of learning how to identify where the pin chambers are, remembering that, and then picking it as you normally would. In chord D, much like in the video of the three locks I just showed you, these are very compressed. I mean, if you look at pin five, that's actually right down the middle of number four on, the, on what would be the markings. So is pin one. But pins two, three and four are all over the place. But it's not, it's not to mean you can't do it. It just means you have to work out where they are by finding them. 
which are actually about to do. And if you knew that I'd been working on this video for nine hours now, problems with Audacity, problems with OpenShot, problems with people outside, you would give me a thumbs up. Just out of pity. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to some picking. No. So, collate, comprehend, there's a sterling lock. Collate, comprehend, and confirm everything I just told you. This six pin pick has fit all the way in to a five pin rim cylinder. So there'll be a bit of it sticking out the back. So first things first, let's find out where they are. So there's the one, it's quite on the left of the one marking. Try and find the number two, which is pretty much on the two. Now obviously I've picked this lot before. Three is on the three. Four's on the four. And five is pretty much on the five. So apart from one being just slightly over, we can not. So that's binding. Give it a bit more, got that. Now, just on the other side of two, nothing there. Nothing on three. Four's binding. Loosening off a bit of tension there. Nice. Popped back out. Talked about that in the last video. And then let's try and find this fifth one, which is just to the side of the fifth marking. Let off a bit of tension there. There's something going on there, but it certainly won't bind him. Go back to three. Just right on it. So you can see that the, the you know this is an odd lock, but the six is just hanging out the back. <laughs> Two's binding again. And it's kind of what you have to do with leashy picks. And it's the same with the vehicle ones. You just keep going through them. You, you might lose ones you've already set through picking others. Doesn't matter. Go back through. Find binders. They're all good. Five is not set. Well, there's a bit of spring bounce, so it is. Go back to four. Threes come out again. This should be the winner. There you go, happy days are here again. So, you know, people say to me, do you sell the spacers for those, you know, for those, uh, so you can use the six pin ones on five pin locks? Well, there's no spacer in this one. You can get spacers, you can make spacers. But in the next video, I'll show you why you don't need to. But basically, this was just one, two, three, four, five and one two three four five in the lock so that's the rim cylinder pick on a rim cylinder nice legendary oh but things get somewhat more complicated this time another five pin lock a euro cylinder but because we've got the pins above the keyway it's the same it's the rim cylinder pick and we've got the markings on this side because lock sporters tend to pick with the pins above. But look, it doesn't fit in. So don't get ripped off buying spacers because how do you know what's how deep it's going to be? How, you know, they're all different. You don't need them. You just need to learn how to use the pick proficiently. And I'll show you how I do it. So I will make it so you can see the markings. Hang on. A bit of tiltage. Tiltage! And there we go. So, look, I'm just going to hold that between my thumb and finger at a, at a spacing that I feel about right. 
and now I'm just going to go through like I did the last video and just try and find out where the pins are and you get a feel for it you get a feel for just pushing them up the uh, pushing them up the uh, <laughs> sounds a bit sensual but pushing them up into the pin chambers look you can tell I've got no tension on it because well look at the, the tension arm sitting there like a flaccid member <laughs> sorry I've been at this video so long but I'm just locating the pins now I'm quite good at this because I do a lot of it it might take you 20 minutes to locate them but I've kind of got that nailed now so I put the tension on and I know that one is somewhere in between one and two and there's no binding there somewhere in between three and two is two little bit of binding but not really I'm not on it you see so it drags a bit and that could be to do with the shape of the pin that I mentioned what seems like hours ago but we got something there and well, I'm not sure but we'll move on so here just to the right of number four so you can see that this is not designed for the spacings of this lock nothing on five or was that not five now this might be five here and yeah that feels more like it and then as as we've always as in the last lock as in the last video you just go back through find those pins if you've got set bounce leave it if they're binding pick it like this one come on that's that done if you get counter rotation you've got a spool or a serrated more likely a spool to be honest with you serrateds don't tend to give so much um, counter rotation it's just more of a little niggle but that's what that's what's amazing about these picks yes it would be lovely if all locks matched the numbers but don't not use them to pick a lock just because they don't match <laughs> making this video has sent me nuts but that's so exciting and it's so amazingly attractive but let's just summarize what we've learned today we learned why the yale leashy style pick picks at an angle why the body of the pick is twisted against the markings we learn what a paracentric keyway is we learned that it doesn't make it impossible to pick it just makes it paracentric you know it, it, it you can have a tiny little bit of warding that's paracentric but we learn why the leashy picks pick like they do but we also learn that we can pick locks where the pins don't match up with the markings we just have to learn how to identify the pin chambers and I can't describe that to you I can't explain that process to you you just have to go you just have to put that pin in a lock and see if you can find five or six pin chambers or pin stacks what does that feel like does that feel right okay so that's slightly to the left of one what does this one feel like Oh, that feels a little bit like the last one I'm gonna assume that that's number two a little bit more to the left of, of, of number two etc etc you know if you've bought these picks and you're picking locks that they do match the markings of which there are loads out there you're getting a lot out of them but if you're not picking locks that they don't match the markings you're really not getting the full potential out of them because yes they're amazing at picking locks they were designed for but to pick locks they weren't designed for is absolutely legendary 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it and then I'll know to make more. Hello to all the new subscribers. It's very hard cutting out a, a lock pick, you know. It's <laughs> I told you. I'm, I, well, I was going to say I've lost it, but I never had it, as you know. But if you... Well, I don't even know what I'm... And you can come by, my lord. Come by, oh.